everyone, hope you are doing well, and welcome to our Summer Biology Book Club. In this video, I'm gonna go over one of the books that I've read this summer as a biology teacher, and let you know what is in this book, what I've thought of it, and give some overall critiques on the science and the information and what's inside. Now, I'm starting this series with a nonfiction book, survival of the sickest. Now this is a super popular book. A lot of AP biology teachers assign it as summer reading for their students. I don't assign it for summer reading to my students. In fact, this is the very first time I have ever read this book. So stay tuned if you want to learn more about this book and see if it's something you want to add to your summer reading list or get a little bit of insight on what I thought of it as a biology teacher. Now make sure you also subscribe because there's going to be more biology book club updates to this channel where I'm going to be reading and going over some of the science behind really popular fiction and nonfiction works with biology elements in them. So stay tuned for that further down the road this summer. Survival of the Sickest is a book published in 2007 by Dr. Sharon Moalam, and in each chapter the author provides different anecdotes and illustrates scientific ideas in the field of biology that relate back to human disease as well as evolution. So a lot of the book is talking about how certain diseases within the human population actually did come to evolve even though at their surface they may not look like they would have helped human evolution or the human species in any way. Out of all the sections in the book I think the prologue was actually my favorite because the author does a really great and succinct job of summarizing some really important biological elements and explaining certain aspects of evolution in a really simple way that even a high schooler could understand. I would actually take this section of the book and encourage students of mine to read it just to get a little refresher on basic biological evolutionary ideas before they dive into their year in AP Biology. So if you just pick this book up and want to read the intro, good for you. It'll be a great experience. The first chapter talks about a disease called hemochromatosis and how that actually could have been influenced by the bubonic plague in Europe and how it was selected for during that disease. The second chapter I didn't like as much. It is about how diabetes could have surfaced because of certain environmental changes in different populations, but some of the conclusions and hypotheses that are supported in this chapter really don't add up, especially in the many years after this book was published. The next chapter looks at the presence of genes within certain populations that relate to vitamin D production and certain diseases, and chapter four goes through several anecdotes and biological mechanisms behind fauvism, a very common enzyme deficiency, and why that might occur throughout the world. Chapter 5 goes on to describe more about malaria and different microbes and pathogens and how we can maybe combat them in the future. Chapter 6 highlights a lot of the work that Barbara McClintock did with jumping genes, which I think on the whole was one of my least favorite chapters only because it had the least amount of interesting anecdotes to go along with it. Chapter 7 is where it got interesting again, talking about DNA methylation and the very beginning of epigenetics. Now, again, since this book was written in 2007, we know so much more about epigenetics than what is written in this book, but it is a great introduction, especially to people who may not know anything about epigenetics and gene expression in both eukaryotes and prokaryotic organisms. The last chapter highlights cancer cells, childbirth, talks a little bit about the aquatic ape theory as well, which is always fascinating to a lot of people, but that theory is now largely dismissed by the scientific community. Of course, the debate is still open, and so there's lots of argument that could be had on this final chapter in the book. One of the things I realized in this book is that as I was reading there are a lot of anecdotes and things that I have heard as a biology teacher and probably many of you have heard if you've ever taken a college level biology class as well. So for somebody who's gone through that path or is a biologist or a medical student or a biology teacher you've probably heard of a lot of these things before. There was one anecdote that I particularly enjoyed because I've studied and worked with malaria a lot and that's the air conditioning was actually invented as a potential cure for malaria which of course it did not do because malaria is caused by the parasitic protist plasma modium, but air conditioning might have inadvertently helped with malaria. It allowed certain people in hotter climates where malaria exists to stay indoors instead of being outside where they can be bit by mosquitoes, which is the vector for that parasite. But on the whole, a lot of the other stories and mechanisms and examples that are shared in the book, I have already heard. Now this book raised a lot of interesting questions. And again, if you're not someone who has already gone through college level biology, there'll be a lot that you'll probably learn as you read. The author describes a lot of interesting biological examples in really easy to understand ways, uses metaphors, and has his own own interesting voice throughout the book. Some of the metaphors I thought got a little out of hand, but it was something that I could read and again, not have to put too much effort into understanding as I went chapter by chapter. Again, I thought the very beginning of the book was the strongest and my favorite part. So if you pick it up and just read the beginning, you'll still learn something there too. Some of the theories that were 
talked about in the book are more speculative than based in actual science that's been published and continues to be accepted today. So any of the statements or hypotheses that the author suggests throughout the book, you may want to go back up and check on as you're reading those and see what science has come out in the last 14 years since this book has been published. You don't want to take everything you read in this work of nonfiction as pure fact. For example, like the anecdote about spicy foods in Sri Lanka or what happens when you put on sunglasses outside. Check out the book to find out what I'm talking about. Of course, it does answer a few interesting questions like why do we need to pee when we're cold and how can there be so much difference between identical twins with the exact same genetic information. If you have to read this book for school, I would say sit back and enjoy it. You might learn something new, but make sure you check the facts and, and just do a little bit of googling to update the science as you go through. If you had to pick just a few chapters to read, I would pick the introduction and of course the chapter on epigenetics. Those were my two favorite and I think two of the ones that were written the best. This author is known for many other interesting scientific theories as well, so make sure you check out their other works if you're interested in reading more. If you don't have to read this book for school, would I recommend it? I would say if you're interested in biology and you haven't taken any upper level biology courses, then yes. If you're a biology teacher and you're thinking about recommending this book to your students, I would say check it out, do a quick read, and maybe select a few chapters to assign to your students if that's what you want to do. Thanks so much for watching. If there's any other books you'd like me to read and give a recommendation on, make sure to put your thoughts in the comments below. Like I said, I have plans for more fiction and nonfiction biology book club videos that I'm going to be releasing this summer. And if you have particular ones that you want to see, let me know. Be sure to give this video a like if it's been helpful, and I'll see you later.